In today's video, we'll take a look at the seasonal analysis patterns using max historical data along with shrinking that down to understand how does the S&P 500 fare during the month of November. Now we'll focus on this in two different lights. One is looking at all Novembers together, so that's splice number one. And the second will be looking at Novembers with the context of a bear market in mind, focusing in on the 2000s crash along with 2008. So we're looking at two different splices here. One is all Novembers as a whole, and the second is just our bear markets and the Novembers inside of there to see if the same patterns hold true. Now, for those of you that would like to follow along, you can download the Seasonal Analysis Indicator for free from our website. That's tosindicators.com slash indicator slash seasonal hyphen analysis. And there you can watch the tutorial in case you're curious around how this is built, along with download the indicator by clicking this big green button. It's completely free and you might find it useful to not only follow along, but test different markets as well. We're looking at just the S&P 500 here, but you might like to follow the same idea with say the NASDAQ, so the Qs, the Dow, or maybe even a stock in particular. Anything that Thinkorswim supports, you can take a look at the seasonal analysis tendencies for. Now starting off with the month of November here, set to max historical data. So we're looking at the daily time frame, max available data that we can go back to, which goes back to the late 90s, on average, November has been a positive month in which we close above where we open. 75.86% of the time inside of the S&P, November has been a positive month. And on average, going all the way back to the earliest we can here with our data, on average, that gain has been right around 1.93%. Now we know this uh, year in particular has been more volatile. And in fact, not just this year, but the past few years have had increased volatility compared to what we've seen historically. So let's first start by shrinking this down from max available to something like say five years only to see what has tended to happen there. Now November still tends to close above where we open and we can see how the average gain there shifts up a bit more to 3.18%. So, so far we're seeing max historical data. November has been a green month along with if we trim that down to just the past five years still green month for the month of november but we have slightly average gain percentages now as we increase this so let's go from say five years to maybe 10 years we can see that number increases from 80 percent to 90 percent of the time so still fairly consistently november a green month that uh, average gain number shrinks down just a tad to 2.54 percent so the patterns that we're seeing still tend to hold true if i expand this 15 years same idea still a green month slightly less than uh, the shorter historical periods and we can see the average gain is starting to diminish just a bit here as well down to 1.53 percent now let's go back to max available here but instead of taking a look at all novembers together let's take a look at just the novembers in the context of bear markets the first one we can go back to is 2008 here and I've already drawn out some lines to help make this process a little easier. So 2008 right here, this was the ending price of November and this was our opening price right here. So our opening was 96.78 and November for that year, 2008 closed at 90.13. So here we did not meet the seasonal analysis tendencies. November was actually a down month in the context of the 2008 bear market. Now, if we come back to the 2000 bear market, those are the other lines that you see on the chart here. There, we had several more Novembers that we could take a look at. So the first one we had was towards the end of the 2000 year. This is the opening price, 142.25. Our closing price, 132.28. So another down month for November in the context of a bear market. And this was the first November inside of that 2000 uh, bear market. Now we move on to 2001, where we have another data point. 2001 was a positive month for the month of November, so we did hit the seasonal analysis tendencies. Uh, and here we opened at 106.60 and we closed at 114.02. So, so far out of the three data points that we've seen, this has been the only one that has met what we would expect to see this November. We have one more data point and that's 2002, where one more time, November opened at 88.35 and closed at 93.98. So another green month here. So what we're seeing is in the context of bear markets, 
that November month is not as positive as, say, some of these labels might tell us. It's not anything like, say, 90%. It's more like 50-50. So for that, we can come back to current price action and take a look to see what our technical analysis patterns are telling us in terms of the broader chart of the S&P 500. Now here, we're seeing bullish activity as we close out the month of October and head into the month of November. In terms of our trend, we're still in a larger downtrending channel, but the one thing to call out is we're now starting to enter our supply zone where we would be looking for short side setups, but that support zone or the supply zone, excuse me, is fairly large. The previous place in terms of where price action has found supply for the short side setups, it's a fairly large range. Let's call it 389, 388, 389, all the way up to about 430. That would also take us to the top end of this downtrending channel so that would make sense in terms of piecing together our technical analysis along with the seasonal analysis tendencies where if this pattern for november does hold true that shorter term strength would take us somewhere inside of this zone we also have that large round number of 400 along with the top end of this downtrending channel which would make sense in terms of seeing shorter term strength and a larger term downtrend very similar to what we've seen towards say that 2000s crash so hopefully this helps bring together not only seasonal analysis, but also technical analysis to give you some clues around what price action may do. Now we looked at this using no indicators, but if we now start to say apply something like our edge signals indicator here and the market pulse, just for two simple measures to see what might happen here, are any one of those giving us clues as well? On the daily time frame, we've crossed above the market pulse line. We have three edge signals down here below which would again uh, suggest shorter term strength off of our weekly time frame chart here we're seeing an edge signal print with the close of last week's activity we have the market pulse above us near that 400 price point so at least shorter term strength to 400 makes sense and we're also looking at the opening price for the month of november as our cue in terms of where that starting point is for quote unquote the race in the month of november so a few different ways to take a look at the S&P 500, but I found it interesting to take a look at November's in the context of a bear market. And we see that the same level of say strength inside of November's doesn't hold true. We don't see the 80 to 90%. We see that number drop down to something more like 50, 50, where really it's a coin flip in terms of is November a strong month or does it close below where it opened? So that's where I find seeing our supply zone here, knowing ultimately we're still in a downtrending channel we might see shorter term strength. We have the market pulse along with the really even nice round number of 400 uh, shortly above us, which would be an 11 point uh, move from where we're currently at, or $11 move rather. That seems like a nice easy way to try and play this seasonal tendency for the month of November inside of the S&P. All right, hope this video is helpful. Take care, everyone. Again, I'll leave links to download all of these indicators, including the seasonal analysis indicator in the description box below.